Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is the brother Yair Radar coming at y'all with a quick video through the spirit on uh, repenting and uh, putting away your sins, right? Right now we're in the midst of the Day of Atonement, almost at the end, but uh, we're going to just go through the spirit and talk about repentance, right? How do you repent, right? Why are you repenting? You feel me? And what you should do when you repent is, right? So we're going to go through the spirit on the video. Uh, should be quick, but we're going to start it off, kick it off with the book of uh, Leviticus chapter 23 and uh, verse 28. This is Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 28, and it reads, uh, actually, I'm going to start at... Um, I'm going to start at verse uh, 26. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. Now, an atonement is something that you make for your sins, right? You're giving something in order for your sins, right? So it says, A day of an atonement, it shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, obviously, we're not doing that right now. Because we don't have to give sacrifices and burn lambs and those different things of that nature because we have repentance, right? That's what this day is based off of, or that's what we do now, right? Uh, verse, uh, verse 28, and ye shall do no work therein that same day, for it is a day of an atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God, right? So that day you don't want to work, right? Well, today you don't want to work. Right, you don't want to uh, be taking out the trash, washing the dishes, anything of that nature. You just want to, you just want to completely submit yourself and focus on repenting of your sins, man. Your secret sins, right? Trying to remember back to di different things that you have done that you may not have remembered, right? That same night, or whatever the case may be, right? You want to go back and completely focus on repenting unto the Most High God, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. It says, um. I'm going to read 28 again. It says, And ye shall do no work there in the same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that... What, so for what's Salakia for? Whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in, the, in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So the Lord said, Hey, look, you're going to cut them off from among the people if you don't observe this high holy day, man. Right? And no, you can't eat. No, you can't drink. No, you can't well, brush your teeth back. Well, and none of that, right? You felt, you're supposed to fast on this uh, holy convocation, man. The Lord, the Most High God literally gave us a day for us to be able to completely focus on for the entire day, repenting of your sins and examining yourself and making yourself better throughout the process, right? Uh, verse 29, it says, For whatsoever so it be, that shall not be afflicted in the same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among the people. All right, so you don't want to do no work on this day, man. Like I said, you want to completely focus on your, the Most High and confessing your faults and your sins unto Him and asking for repentance. Okay, so let's go to the uh, let's go to the Book of Isaiah. All right, let's go to the Book of Isaiah. Chapter 58. All right, let's go to Isaiah 58, right? Because this day is about fasting, right? The day of atonement is about fasting. Like I said, it's pretty much almost over now. Um, day of atonement is about fasting, right? So how do you fast? What do you do when you fast, right? This is the book of Isaiah chapter 58 and uh, verse 5. I'll start at verse 5. It says, is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow, uh, bow down his head as a bourse and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day unto the Lord? Right. So it's a rhetorical question. It's telling you, is he telling you, look, man, this is what I made you. This is what I want you to do when you fast, man. Is that day not a day to afflict yourself? Right. To stop doing your labors. Right. And to simply focus on repenting, not only repenting, but afflicting yourself and not giving the flesh what it wants. Reading on verse six, it says, is not this fast I have chosen 
Is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke? Right. So you fast for different reasons, man. But the main one, some of the main reasons that you fast is to what to loose the bands of wickedness from you, man. Some people may be struggling with damn uh, 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 lust. Some people may be struggling with damn uh, whatever the case may be, man. But you, so whatever you're struggling with, hey, you fast into the most high, hey, to loose that band of wickedness from you, man, to get that damn demon off your back from whatever demon that you're dealing with, right? Brothers may have a pride demon, a lust demon. Brothers may have a damn lying spirit on them, a deceitful heart, right? Gal found in their spirit, whatever the case may be, hey, look, you fast to loose those, to be loosened from those chains of wickedness, man, right? Let's go to the book of uh let's go to the book of Jonah. Right. Let's go to the book of Jonah. Chapter three. Bear with me, it's really this page is sticking together right now. Alright, this is the book of Jonah, chapter three. And uh, I'm going to start at verse 5. This is Jonah 3 and 5. It says, So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put sackcloth from the greatest of them even unto the least. Right? So even from the greatest of them to the least of them, the old man all the way down to the young children, man, hey, everybody fasted. That's the same thing with the Day of Atonement. Everybody should be fasting. Right, the Day of Atonement is serious, man. The whole nation of Israel, man. One day, hey, to fast and and a, hey, it's like a a, a a clean sleep that the Most High gave you. A specific day for you to be able to fast and pray and repent, man. Right, you can't be in this thing and repenting on every other. Uh, uh, if this is your first time repenting, man, hey, you going off and fasting, you going off. If you've been in this thing for uh. A, a good amount of time if you've been in the truth damn two three years and it's your first time keeping the day of atonement hey man you gotta kind of check yourself or if this is the first time that you repentant or fasting period you gotta kind of check yourself man right it says verse six for the word came unto the king of nineveh and he rose from his throne and he laid and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles saying let neither man nor beast herd nor flock taste anything these them uh Salakia, taste anything let them not feed nor drink water hey so even hey even the damn animals got a fast man even the animals man Right, don't let a hey, your, your kids, your animals, right, even yourself included, right. Obviously, a hey, it's a day to fast and a hey, examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not, right, and confess those faults unto the Most High God, right. We'll get a couple more. Let's get the uh, Book of Daniel, chapter ten. All right, let's get the Book of Daniel, chapter ten, and uh, come on. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 10, and verse 2. It says, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came, uh, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. So Daniel fasted ate three weeks, man. Daniel was fasting for three weeks, but he said during those three weeks, he ate nothing. Nothing touched his mouth, man. Not no wine. You feel me? Not no uh, meat, right? No pleasant bread. Nothing touched his mouth, man. And nothing should touch your mouth. Don't be trying to gargle Listerine throughout the day because your breath getting hot. Hey, it's going to do its thing, man. Right? Let's get a... Uh, right? Why do why are we repenting? Right? Why should you repent, period? Right? This is the book of Luke, chapter 13. Classic. This is the book of Luke, chapter 13, and verse 5. It says, I tell you, nay, 
But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish, man. That's why you repent, man. Because if you don't repent, hey, you're going to get put to death. It's as simple as that. The most simple, the most simple thing, man. The most simple thing ever, man. Hey, you either going to repent or you're going to perish, man. You either going to get right or get left. Right? That's how it is. That's how the Lord made it, man. That's why it's important to repent. You can't be the person that only repent at one time a week, man. If you repenting one time a week, hey, you going off, man. You just let all your sins build up on top of each other. And then that's what people in Christianity do, man. They do all the wickedness throughout throughout the week, right? Including going on the going to the clubs on Fridays and Saturdays. Then guess what? They say, hey, it's all good. I'm gonna go and repent on Sunday. Then they start it all over again and it's on repeat. And that's off, man. Every time you do something, man, you should repent, man. You should repent for the for the uh, for your faults that you have committed against the Most High God, man. All right, let's go to the Book of Acts. All right, matter of fact, let's go to the Book of Revelations. All right, let's go to the Book of Revelations. All right, this is the Book of Revelations, chapter two and verse five. It says, "Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent." So even the Lord on his own mouth, he said, hey, repent multiple to all throughout the scriptures. The Lord is telling people to repent. Man. Why? Because hey, you got to. If you don't repent, you're going to get put to death. It's as simple as that. You can't just go throughout your life, living life, committing sin, and then just saying, oh, I saw good. Hey, you got, hey, you got, man, I, man, damn, Eve told me, man, we was down in damn, uh, 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 uh broad ripple. Overheard of Eve saying, um, God died so I could, uh, uh, I mean, uh, God died so I could sin. That's off, man. Say, God died so I can sin. Right? That's not why the Lord died, man. And God didn't die, man. Right? Yeah, how wish I did for the saints, man. Right? And he didn't die just so you can go and be a damn nigga woman or, or a damn nigga in the streets or a harlot, man. Right? He died to give you that grace period to be able to get yourself together, man. Right? It says, I'm going to start over. It says, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of thy place, except thou repent. Right? So, except you repent, hey, you're going to get put to death, man. Except you repent, you're going to get put to death. Except you repent, hey, the Lord going to take that candlestick away from you, which is this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, the spirit of truth, right? The Holy Spirit, man, he's going to take it away from you. And then you're going to go back to being a nigga in the streets, just like you was doing when you was in the truth anyway, right? Let's go to the book of uh, Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 3, 19. It's the book of Acts, chapter 3. And uh, I'm going to start at verse, I'm going to start at 18, actually 17. It says, and now, brethren, I wrought that ye, through ignorance ye did it and did also your rulers. Because through ignorance, we commit sin sometimes, right? Before we came into this thing, hey, it was through ignorance that we was doing the things that we was doing in the world, man. Being fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, right? Thieves, murderers deceivers extortioners all this was a hey, th through through ignorance man but now you feel me you come into this thing you come into this truth now in this context he was talking to the jews man that damn offered up yahweh shot to be put to death he said through ignorance he did it man because you didn't know you was just being stiff-necked and hard-headed man so you didn't know so through ignorance he did it it says but those verse 18 it says but those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all the prophets that Hamashiach should suffer, he hath also fulfilled. Verse 19, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Man. Hey, so, hey, that's why, hey, you got to repent in this thing, man. Right? You got to repent. And you can't just repent. Just to, You got to know what you repent from, man. You can't just be repenting and you talking about, uh, yeah, repenting for all this, all the stuff that I did in my life, all the stuff that I did, uh, 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 last week on Saturday, I repent from all of that. Nah, man, you got to confess your faults unto the most high, man. Let's get there real quick. 
right? You got to confess your faults. All right, let's go to the book of Psalms. I'm kind of jumping the gun, but it's all good, man. So I'm just going to let the Spirit do its thing. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 32. Right. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 32 and verse 5. It says, I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. So you got to acknowledge your sins unto the Most High God, man. You got to, you got to, you got to, you can't just... Uh, 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 like I said, you can't just say, oh, I repent for all the bad stuff I did. Father, have mercy upon me. Nah, you got to repent, man. You got to repent and you got to you gotta confess your faults unto the most high. Confess your transgressions. It says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. It's a lot. Okay, so you got to confess your transgressions into the Lord, man, and he'll forgive him, right? Let's uh, jump up to verse 1. So Psalms 32 and 1, it says, Blessed is he whose transgressions are is forgiven, whose sin is covered. It says, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in those, uh, so like, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Okay, because you don't want to keep, you don't want to have guile in your spirit in that time, man. All right, let's go to the book of, uh, Let's get another one. Okay. Let's go to the book of uh, 1 John 1 and 9. All right. Let's go to 1 John 1 and 9. It's the book of uh, Selakia. It's the book of 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, so, hey, if you confess your sins, hey, he's just and he's a, a, a right to just be able to forgive you for your sins, man. Right. And uh, cleanse you from your unrighteousness. Verse 10, it says, if we say that we have not sinned. We make him a liar and the word is not in us. So you can't go around thinking that you don't commit sin, man. Anybody that says, oh, I don't I don't commit sin. I never sinned. I never did anything. I didn't do anything wrong. And you're going off. In the book of Proverbs, it tell you that even the thought of foolishness is sin, man. Okay, in the book of Job, it tell you that, hey, man, drinketh iniquity like water, man. Says if you come from a woman, hey, if you if you come from a woman, you automatically unclean, man. Automatically unclean, man, and filthy and wicked, man. Why? Because you come from a woman, man. And everybody upon the face of the earth came from a woman, man. Okay. Let's get uh let's get the book of Psalms, chapter thirty eight. Let's get the book of Psalms, chapter thirty eight and eighteen. Right, then we're going to go to Cyrac, chapter, uh, I believe, 17. Right, this is the book of, uh, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 38 and verse 18. It says, I will declare mine iniquity, meaning I will name my iniquities. I will call out my sins, man. I will be sorry for my sin. Okay, so, hey, you're going to declare, hey, you got to confess. It all goes back to what? Confessing your faults, man, unto the most high God. Confessing your sins, man, and realizing that you did this wrong. And then when you and when you do that, hey, you got to leave off from them, man. You got to forsake your sins. So that don't mean repent and then go right back. If you damn repent for smoking weed, don't repent from smoking weed. And then as soon as you get done repenting, you go and spark up again, man. That's going off. The world going to destroy you, man. Right? <clears throat> so when you repenting, man, you want to repent. Repenting is to leave off from your sins, man. Right? You repent and you don't do it no more, man. Like how was Sean told? He said, okay, go and sin no more. He didn't say, all right, cool. Right? Go do your thing now. You good. Just go back and do it again. Just, just if you do it again, make sure. No, he said, go and sin no more, man. Let's go to the book of uh, Cyrac. Let's go to the book of Cyrac. 
I want verse, I mean, I want chapter, I believe I want 17. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 17. And bear with me, Israel. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 25. Come. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 17 and verse 25. It says, return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. So you want to, hey, you want to forsake your sins, man. You want to turn to the Lord, repent, confess your faults, and, and leave off from your sins. I'm going to read that again. It says, return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. I Meaning, don't do it again, man. Every single day, you should be inspired to be better the next day than you was the day before. That's what this thing is, man. So you don't keep them committing the same sins, man. But what you're doing, hey, you continually, hey, I'm cutting that off now. Right? You didn't cut that off. Now you on to the next thing that you got to work on. Hey, and cut that off. Then once you get done with that, hey, you cut the next thing off, man. And it's not going to happen easy. Just because you fast one time, that don't mean that damn lust spirit that you've been dealing with for your whole life just going to leave you like that, man. Okay? It's going to leave for a time, yeah. But guess what? It's going to come another way, and it's going to try to find another secret door that you ain't even know about, man. That's why you got to fast continually in this thing, man. You got to be fast diligently. Okay? Verse uh, verse 26, it says, turn again to the most high and turn away from iniquity. So you got to turn away from iniquity, turn away from sin. It says, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health and and hate thou abomination vehemently. And you got to hate hate and you got to hate it, man. So you got to turn away. So you got to turn away from your sins and hate it, man. That's what repentance is at the end of the day. Turning away from your sins. Hey, not doing them no more, man. Okay. Let's go to the book of um let's go to the uh book of Psalms, chapter 119. Actually, let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. All right, like I said, this is gonna be a quick video. This is 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. It says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. So you got to examine yourselves, especially during this time. On the Day of Atonement, like I said, I know it's, I know it's, uh, it's pretty much over right now, but even when you fast in period, man. When you fast in period, when you examine yourself, not only when you fasting, but hey, when you repenting, not only when you repenting, but every single day you should examine yourself and see what you got to work on. Well, OK, I could have handled this situation with this brother differently. Right. I was wrong on that. You got to you got to examine yourself constantly, man. You should always be like they, um, the damn Michael Jackson song, man. You got to uh, 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 start with the man in the mirror, man, so to speak. You got to look at yourself and examine yourself. You can't always be pointing the finger and calling other people out, but you're not looking within, man. You're not, you don't know what, if a brother asks you what you need to work on, you shouldn't damn be like, uh, man, what do I need to work on? Nah, man, you should know off top of the dome, man. You should already know what you got to work on. It shouldn't be something that you got to think about. Like, man, what do I got to work on? Nah, man, that means you ain't been examining yourself. If a brother come up to you and ask you, what you what you need to work on? Hey, it's it. I need to read more. I need to study more. I need to. Uh, I I ask the Lord to increase my appetite for the script. You you should already know these different things, man. It shouldn't be something where y'all damn sit down and you like, man. What you think I need to work? Nah, brother. You should know what you gotta work on, man. You should know these different things. You gotta examine yourself, whether you be in the faith or not, man. I'm gonna read that again. It says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. <laughs> How that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is in you, except ye be reprobate, man. So you got to know these different things. 
Okay, let's go to the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 26 and 2. Let's go to Psalms 26 and 2. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 26 and verse 2. And it reads, it says, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. So he said, hey, man, prove me, Lord. Try me. Ex hey, examine me. Because the Lord going to show you what you need to. If you ask the Most High that, hey, the Most High going to show you what you need to work on. If you genuinely don't know, right? Or you may know certain things that you need to work on. But you like, man, I know it's more than that. Most high, show me. Most high, show me what else I need to work on because I know I can do better at something else other than these couple things that I pointed out. So you got to, and that's mighty, man. That's mighty as hell, man. And you got to ask the most high that. You got to ask the most high and say, Lord, examine me and prove me and try me. Okay, let's go to the book of Psalms chapter um, uh, 8, I believe. That's not what I want. So like you bear with me. Psalms chapter 7. This is the book of Psalms chapter 7 and verse 8. It says, it says, the Lord shall judge the people. Judge me. O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity that is in me. So he said, look, judge me, Father, according to my integrity. Judge me according to what's in me, man. And that's heavy too, man. David was asking the Lord, he said, judge me, man. Hey, you got a lot of people that's scared, that's scared to ask the most how to judge them, man, on things that they going off on. Hey, he said, man, judge me according to my integrity, man. He was asking the most how to correct him, man. And let me, let me get this in the book of Psalms, chapter 119. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 71. Because people got to realize, man, a lot of people, well, you should fear the chastisement of the Most High, but you also got to rejoice at that and realize that, hey, it's a good thing to be chastised by the Most High, man. It's a good thing for the Most High. You going this way and the Most High pick you up and set you and you going that way. Yeah, it's going to hurt probably. Yeah, you might, be, you might be going through something. Well, you are going to go through something, but hey, that's a good thing, man. If the if you just went your whole life and never got judged for things that you did, hey, how would you know if you was wrong or right, man? Or if you was doing the right thing? You not going to know. That's why it's important that we ask the most how to judge us on these things, man. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 71. It says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes, man. That's mighty. It said, it is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes, man. So it is a good thing to be afflicted from the most high God. Why? So you can know, hey, clearly you need to stop doing that, man. Or when you get in chastised, okay, okay, let me seek out why these different things is happening to me, right? Then you go back to what? Hey, examining yourself. It all goes back to examining yourself, repenting uh, to the Most High, confessing your faults, confessing your sins, and leaving off from them, right? Let's go to Psalms 139. Psalms 139 and 23. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 139, and verse 23. It says, Search me, O God, and know mine heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Same thing. Search me, O God, and hey, know my heart and try me, man. You got to ask the most high, right? And, but when you asking the most high, that you got to know what you're getting yourself into, man. You say, try me, right? Hey, the most high, I really try you, man. The most high have all hell break loose in your life, man. And you don't know what's going on. And you like, man, why all this, why all this, why all this and why all that going on? Hey, you asked the most how to try you, man. So he trying you and breaking you down, huh? And see and seeing if you're going to stay with him or if you're going to fold. Right? If you fold, hey, he ain't got nothing to do with you, man. But if you continue to endure and realize that this is the chastisement of the most high God and he proving you and trying you, then, hey, you'll get through that thing, man. Right? And use that and say, okay, the most high dealing with me. 
I know I need to do this. Let me read more. Let me study more. Let me fast more. Right? Let me pray more. Let me pray without ceasing. Okay? So it's important to pray fast. Not only to pray and fast, but to repent, man. Because if you're not repenting, you're not going to make it. If you're not praying, you're not going to make it. If you're not fasting, you're not going to make it. You got to have, you got to use all three, man. Repentance, prayer, and fasting, man. And you got to examine yourself, man. Because how can you, how can you truly repent if you're not examining what you've done wrong, man? You don't even know what the hell you repenting from, uh, from. You just, you just, damn, talking. Saying, yeah, sorry for that thing that I did a couple years ago. I don't remember what it was, but sorry for that. Nah, man. Hey, hey, remember if you can, right? And even, that's why you even got to ask the Most High to forgive you for your secret sins. The sins that you don't even know about, man. You may not remember all your sins that you've done. But guess what? You ask the Most High, hey, look, Father, forgive me for my secret sins, man. Forgive me for those different things. The sins that I can't recall, the sins that I can't remember. Hey, forgive me for those things. Hey, forgive, hey, forgive my for, hey, forgive me for the sins of my forefathers, man. Because we are our forefathers. Right? Hey, 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 we did worse than our forefathers, man. I tell you that in the book of Jeremiah. Okay, so hey, fast, pray, examine yourself, and repent. Okay, let me get a couple more, couple, couple more precepts couple more precepts. Oh, let me think real quick. I want a couple more precepts. Let me get this in the book of uh, Second Edges, chapter 9. It's the book of Second Edges, chapter 9, because I just want to hone in on the fact of the importance of repentance, man. This is the book of 2nd Edges, chapter 9, at verse 9. It says, Then shall there be a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. So the people that understand that you can repent, but they take advantage of this grace and mercy that the Most High has given us. Right? They take, they take advantage of the grace and mercy. They say, oh, it's all right. I'm going to get right uh, when I start to see stuff start to happen. Then that's when I'm going to repent and get my life right. Hey, you abusing the grace of the most high God that he gave to us by damn killing his son, man. Dying for the wicked Israelites, man. Verse 10, it says, For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, meaning when they had freedom to repent, man. When they have freedom to get their life for uh, life together, man, with the Most High God, repenting, examining themselves, praying, fasting, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Yet when they had liberty, and when, uh, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, so when they had a chance to repent, man, it says, place of repentance was open unto them, understood not but despised it. It said they understood not, but they despised it. We tell people all the time, hey, brother, you got to repent, keep the commandments. They all right, all right, all right, all right. People flick us off, right? They cuss us out, right? They walk past and spit in our direction, man. And all, all types of brother, brothers try to fight us, man. All because we trying to save them. What are we trying to save them from, man? Verse 12, it says, the same must know it after death by pain. So what we, that's all we trying to do, man, is warn our people, man. Because we don't want our people to suffer, man. We don't want our people to have to go through these different things. But, hey, hey, for some, for some, for two-thirds of Israel, hey, it got to happen. For 66.6% .6 of Israelites, of so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, hey, it got to be that way. Why? Because the Lord said that they're not going to repent, man. They're not going to repent. Not only are they not going to repent, but, hey, two-thirds got to be cut off, man. Right, two thirds gotta know it after death by pain, man. So if you're not repenting in these last days, man, hey, you're not gonna make it. You're gonna be destroyed, man. And that's a heavy lot to fall into, and that's a lot that you don't want to fall into, right? So let's get this in the book of Mark. Okay, let's get this in the book of Mark, man. It's the book of Mark, chapter one. 
verse 15. It's the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 15, and it reads, it says, I start at uh, 14. It says, Now, after that John was put in prison, Yahweh Shai came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. All throughout the scriptures, man, it's telling you to do A, repent. It's telling you to repent. Why? Because if you don't repent, A, you're going to get killed, man. You're going to get put to death. It is what it is. If you don't repent, you're not going to make it. Simple. Okay, so with that, I want to give a call. Halayim, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah. Lord willing, the day of atonement was mighty for brothers and sisters. And y'all was repenting, fasting, uh, examining yourselves through the spirit. And at the most high. Hey, and not only uh, uh, praying and fasting for yourselves, but praying for uh, your nation, man. And other brothers in the congregation, sisters in the congregation, and other brothers and sisters that you may know. Right? And praying for those uh people brothers and sisters also all right so i want to give a call online how about shimmy how about shot shalom